Hey lifers, welcome back to the channel. This is Jay in the Life. I'm Jay, and I'm so pumped, guys. This is this week's Theater Therapy, and I'm talking about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Look at this, repping my Avengers. I am so pumped. Um, new Marvel content. I'm a huge comic nerd, and I am gonna be uh, reacting and kind of reviewing and breaking down each episode as they air. Um, there's only six of these episodes, but this is gonna be like a six hour long Marvel movie because this, each episode has 25 or like a $22 million budget around there. That's wild. Um, and you can definitely, it definitely shows in this episode. Um, so let's get right into breaking down this first episode. It's so cool. I just watched it. Just woke up early to watch it and record this. So exciting. Uh, remember, before we get into this, uh, if you like this channel, you like me, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know your guys' theories for Falcon Winter Soldier, how much you guys liked it, and all those fun things. Now... This episode, we find out that this show is picking up six months after Endgame. So, this is after WandaVision, because WandaVision was like weeks after Endgame. And the world is kind of in disarray. Um, because, yes, it, in the Endgame, the Avengers Endgame movie, like, it is, a, you can see the turmoil of the world during the blip. When half the population was gone, it was pretty wild. But it's just as difficult with everyone returning um you can tell that like you don't like we kind of saw that in wanda in v wandavision um when we saw monica rambo come back uh like it was chaotic when you saw everybody return from the web because billions of people just randomly returning back to the world is pretty wild and it's kind of cool how this is like play kind of playing off how we've been, like, the, how the world's changed ever since, like, the pandemic. It's very cool, like, them saying this is a new world, we gotta get used to all this stuff, and how the economy is being affected, and it really is cool. It's almost like Marvel knew that this was happening. Starts right off with action. Like, we start right off with Sam. Well, it kind of first starts off with Sam, like, packing up the shield that Cap gave him in the end of Endgame, and you get that flashback of, like, Cat, old cap telling him like this is uh this is you and sam's like this doesn't seem like this seems like it belongs to someone else the infamous line and then we get sam in his falcon outfit so cool in a plane going after a criminal group called the laf they're just this new organization this criminal terrorist organization group that's popped up after the blip and he's it's so cool it, it i like how this show's paying homage to a lot of like other movies and other characters where um sam like falls backwards out of the plane kind of like captain america in winter soldier and uh it they made falcon look so cool in the show um because they never really got into falcon that much on in all the other movies you saw him fight like a little bit in all these movies, but this is really cool how we get like a close up shot of uh, Falcon and how cool it is to just be able to fly around like that and make, they really put you in the headspace or of being in the Falcon suit, which also reminded me of um, Iron Man shots where they would do like close up shots of Sam's face and then they would also show what he's seeing through his goggles. So it, rare, it did really feel like Tony in the Iron Man suit, and it was so cool, so much fun. Uh, so while he's flying around trying to save a captain, uh, Captain John Walker is the... So we, we don't know that he's going to become the new Captain America. That is the big reveal at the end of the episode. Piss a lot of people off. He has a very punchable face. Okay? People don't like... I don't think people are going to lie. I haven't read anything online, but I have a feeling people are not going to like this new Captain America. They wanted it to be Sam. And they made it some other nameless white dude. When it first shot, I didn't even realize. I watched this a couple times. The first time I watched it, I was like, who is that guy? And then on rewatch, I realized it was the begin in the very beginning of the episode. It was the captain that Sam was saving from the LAF group. That was such a cool sequence of him fighting these guys in the sky they jump out of the plane they're all wearing these like glider suits 
and it's so it's done so well the graphics and everything on this uh and the cg you can tell they had a big budget because it looked so cool so fun the fighting styles and while this is happening up in the air we are introduced to torres oh uh, we're gonna need to call some people um he's a guy from the military i think it's the air force is what they uh sam said he's been working with the air force for six months uh, this Torres guy is from uh, Falcon Comics, so it's really cool that we got introduced to him. He seems like a fun, like, comic relief character, and he's kind of on the ground giving, like, uh, intel to Sam while he's up in the air. Uh, so cool. And I loved the return of Red Wing. Return of we Red Wing, yo. It just reminds me of that scene from Civil War. <laughs> When he tells uh, Scarlet Witch, she's like, say thank you. She's like, I'm not, I'm not Scarlet Witch, uh, Black Widow. He's like, say thank you. And Natasha's like, I'm not thanking that thing. <laughs> it's so great. It's his little trusty sidekick. It always reminds me of like Spider-Man's little thing that comes off his chest. So cool. Um, and the, f the fight, like choreography and the fight sequences are so cool with uh, Falcon. I love that one scene where he knocks a guy out using his thrusters of his, uh, like, wings of his backpack. It's so cool. It's kind of like uh, simulating, like, super strength, where he, like, grabbed him, put the thrusters on, and smashed his head into something. Done very well. And so you also see that they're worried about, they're playing in the fact that there's a lot of politics. They're worried about, they don't want to go into Libyan airspace. They can't because they said Libya will be mad. So there's kind of a time clock on this uh, fight in the air because they're racing towards, the terrorists are trying to get into Libya because they know that Falcon and the U.S. Army will not be able to follow them into Libya. So there's like a time crunch here on trying to get this captain guy away from them. So clearly the LAF people knew that he was going to become the Captain America or that they knew that he was important for some reason because they wanted to uh, capture him. And that wasn't sh like told to us till later. But such an amazing way to introduce Sam. And then he eventually does get captain the captain away from him where he just like glides right into the plane and kind of grabs him grabs a hold of him and flies down and it's so sick and it's really cool too how much you see how big of a hero falcon is because in the other in the avengers movies falcon's kind of um i don't know like like not downplayed but like outshined by the bigger guys like by the hulks and the thors and stuff but when you see him just by himself he is such an avenger and such a hero because we they have all the air force and all the soldiers just on the ground using binoculars up and like watching sam just fight all these dudes by himself and take them all out like at ease so it's so sick to see like how powerful he really is because i never really thought of falcon to be one of the big players in the avengers but he really is it's just he's always outshined by like the gods and shit so it i really like how they're focusing in on just these two characters falcon and winter soldier now they go into tunisia where uh sam after the battle he's talking with torres and torres is kind of explaining um we needed some exposition of what's going on in the world and he's kind of explaining who the LAF are and who these new terrorist groups are popping up. So there's this terrorist group called the Flag Smashers. So the Flag Smashers are kind of like recruiting people online while they have this new like AR type of app, I guess, where you can, you see their little like symbols of like the red hand everywhere. And they're recruiting people online to do things. And later, we see that Torres goes to one of these meetups. It's kind of like a flash mob type thing, except for they're not dancing in the flash mob. They are all there to be a distraction. It's so cool and well done and smart of these Flag Smasher people um, where they, ha they recruited all these random people to show up while they're robbing a bank or he's seemingly robbing a bank because he jumps out of like a building with a bunch of like duffel bags of money. And they, right as he jumps out of the building, this unknown Flag Smasher terrorist guy who seemingly has superpowers, um, I'll get into those theories in a minute, 
and right as he jumps down all of the flash mob people that were recruited to come there just get thing on their phone that says run and they're all wearing the same mask and they all just start running around as a distraction and then he hands off the duffel bags to two of them and it's so cool and they just kind of like disappear into the chaos and this is when we realize that there are super powered people or these flag smashers are somehow super powered so there's a lot of theories here they could be mutants which I think it's a little early in the MCU to be introducing mutants just because I feel like they're going to do that in a different way. But maybe not. Maybe this is how they slowly start hinting at mutants. Uh, they could be super soldiers, which is more, I think that's where they're more going to head into them, like go to them being super, super soldiers, kind of like Bucky and Captain America. They're somehow like, I don't know enhanced or augmented and there's even a line too when torres is talking to falcon later describing what happened and torres goes uh shows him the footage because torres was like filming the whole thing shows him the footage of the strong guy that fucking smashes this dude like kicks him and smashes him into a sign and that dude's fucked okay like he is not getting up from that kick super powered kick all day and torres is like do you think they are and this like pauses there wait you don't think you could be a but i'll circle back to you and sam's like we'll figure it out so we don't know what he meant by they are if they are aliens if they are mutants super soldiers if he was going to say enhanced like there's i don't know what he was going to say so that's kind of a big mystery going forward is how these terrorists have superpowers but that was very interesting. So Torres, I like that character a lot. I think he's going to be a regular. He's cool. He survived. He got his ass beat by the superpowered terrorist, but he made it and so excited about that. Um, Flag Smashers, kind of their whole reason for being terrorists is that they thought the world was better before the bl like during the blip when half the world was gone and it was more like in chaos or I guess to them less chaos and they don't they l thought the world was simpler and better then so I guess they want to just kill a bunch of half the population and uh, they agreed with Thanos okay they agreed with motherfucking Thanos and they also don't like borders of like they just want everyone to be together uh, they don't like so I guess that's why there's a lot of people agreeing with their concept here that they don't like the politics of these borders and that's why they kind of were heavily like focusing on that in the first scene when they said you can't go into the libyan borders airspace um yeah so we'll see more about what's going on with the flag smashers but that um seems like an interesting cool uh villain for the series let's just finish out sam's story so because in this this is kind of a slow burn episode here of uh with sam and bucky they don't even meet up in this episode so it's cool it is very much about each of them but they haven't teamed up yet so i'm excited um probably in the next episode they'll team up we'll see but i'm very excited about that um but yeah so sam goes back to washington to return the uh captain america shield to the smithsonian where there was like this whole museum um like dedicated to captain america shows all of his suits from all the different eras very cool we've seen that before um steve actually visited there himself and uh yeah because sam just felt like he didn't deserve the title of captain america or really no one does i guess he or he didn't think anyone like was ready to take on the mantle of captain america so he just returned the shield to the smithsonian thinking that it's just gonna be there sitting on like a mantle for people to gawk over but little did he know that this douchey guy from the i don't know department of defense i think where he goes um i knew something was off with him too in the very beginning when he goes thanks for giving over the shield it was the right choice it was the right decision i was like something's up with this mother okay something's up i don't trust him and i was right to not trust him at the end uh but yeah so after he returns that he sees uh roadie and they talk and roadie asks him why didn't you take up the mantle and he said it just didn't feel right and he goes back home to his sister in louisiana her name's sarah in delacroix louisiana where she has been struggling ever since the blip these last five years she said that she was alone 
her husband, she has two kids, uh, Sam's nephews. Apparently, she's a widow, so I think that her husband must have died before the blip. But she goes in and says, like, you don't know what it's been like the last five years. I've been alone uh, with two babies that I had to raise by myself, keep this business afloat. It's their parents' business where they did some type of fishing or something with a, they have like an old boat that she wants to sell. Sam does not want her to sell this boat. And she's like, you're off fighting like villains and people in space. And then you were off fighting Dr. Space Cake or whatever while I was holding it together for five long years. Like I'm here trying to keep this alive in the real world. I'm sorry that like, and he, that I need to do this. And he's, it's because Sam has, he's more like idealistic. And he's like, no, like, I don't want to give up our family legacy. And she's like, I'm being realistic, okay? Like, it's, and it's a really cool dynamic. I like the storyline. I like how they're really getting into the character development of these characters and the character drama, um, which is not usually touched on in a lot of big Marvel movies. They try to get a loan, and we while they're trying to get the loan, uh, this is when you realize that the economy is like really gone to shit. Like the economy is in the toilet ever since the blip. I mean, everyone's returned back. He said that it's just really hard. Everyone's been gone for five years. He's like, well, it doesn't show that you've had any income for five years. And Sarah's like, yeah, you can't make any income when you don't exist. And so it's hard. So a lot of these people have been gone for five years and they're like, well, I need money now. And so all these banks and stuff, they're like, well, we can't just keep, we can't loan out money to like half the population. So I can see how this would be really messing up the economy. And I like seeing the real world implications of the blip and how realistic it would be. And it's another similarity to what's going on with COVID and how that's affected the world and everything. So it's really cool. It does feel like it's touching home. And uh, so he eventually, even though the loan officer uh, was a fan of Falcon, wanted to get a selfie, he still did not give him the loan. Um, and he, he asked some, he asked some good questions too. Like, he, like the loan officer, he's like, "Well, how do you guys make money?" He's like, "Did Stark pay you?" Uh, like my condolences, by the way. <laughs> he's like, "Did Stark pay you to the government? Like, how do like I mean, I know you're superheroes, but how do you guys make money?" And Clearly, he doesn't. Sam's hurting for money, just like his sister. Um, and that's kind of something that people have always wondered. Because if you're not like a billionaire like uh, Tony Stark, uh, how are you making money? And apparently, you're not. Apparently, you're just uh, suffering through. And Sam goes, well, there's a lot of goodwill. People like to help you out when you're saving the world. And the loan officer's like, well, you can't survive off goodwill. And it's like, uh, like the guy was really douchey and annoying. Um, I did not like it, but he ended up not giving him the loan. His sister's like, I told you, the banks aren't gonna help us out. I need to sell the, sh the ship, the boat. And Sam still wants to find a way to figure it out. Um, so that's a really cool dynamic there. And then to wrap up Sam's story, we find out at the very end that uh, uh, the DOD guy that Sam gave Captain America's shield to gave it to someone else and announces this new Captain America, um, which is this fucking John Walker guy, not into it, pissed. Um, I, I, it, you can just tell, it just reminds me of the first Captain America movie where it's all about show and it's just, which I guess it's a good idea because you want to give people hope. But at the end of the day, it just seemed, I feel like it's going to piss a lot of people off. And Sam did not seem happy about it because it's almost like he got tricked into giving up the shield because um, they clearly didn't tell him that they were going to be giving it to someone else. And it's the guy that he saved. He saved the guy in the fucking beginning, which is a cool callback to Winter Soldier is one of my favorite heroes in the MCU. I love Sebastian Stan. Talk about Gorge. And he's such a good actor. Um, he's dealing with a lot. I mean, he's been through some trauma, yo. Been through some trauma. Uh, we start off, because I mean, he's clearly going to have some PTSD. So we start off with um, hit, uh, Bucky having a nightmare. A flashback to him as Winter Soldier. Another flashback of him being brainwashed and forced to murder forced to be this winter soldier forced to be a uh hitman against his will 
Um, it shows him like killing a bunch of people and then killing an innocent kid. Um, an innocent, um, seemingly a ama Asian American kid. And, uh, well, like not a kid, but he was like probably in his like early twenties and he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, this kid. And it, it was so sad because he's like, I, he's like, I didn't see anything. I didn't, after he, um, witnessed, uh, Bucky killing a bunch of people that he was assigned to kill by Hydra. Cause he even says hail Hydra. And, um, he goes, I didn't see anything. I don't see anything. And then he pulls out his gun and shoots him and he wakes up Bucky sleeping on the floor wakes up in sweat um you can tell that he's just alone isolated not knowing how to deal with shit. i mean he's been through so much so bucky's seeing a uh like mandatory therapist played by amy aquino um i love her dr rayner she's really funny they have some cool banter there um and she even says like this is therapy is condition of your pardon so he's been pardoned by the government, um, but he needs to go to therapy because they need to make sure that he's not gonna go out and kill people from all of his trauma. So she knows that he's like having uh, flashbacks. It's been six months he's, or he's having nightmares. Um, they're trying to work through this. So the way that they've figured out for him to work through this trauma, which kind of reminds me of like a sobri of sobriety, he's trying to make amends. Um, and he has three rules when making amends. He's trying to find all the people that he wronged while he was a winter soldier, while he was under control of Hydra. And he has three rules when making amends. Number one, can't do anything illegal, which he showed in flashbacks she already broke. Number two, nobody gets hurt because, and that's going to be hard with Bucky because he, uh, he's a badass dude. And number three, he has to, he says to everyone, I am no longer the winter soldier. I'm James Bucky Barnes and you're part of my efforts to make amends. And so he has this list of all the people that he feel that he is wronged and he's going through. He there's just one guy that he's making amends to and it's such a sad tragic story. Um, he is now living in Brooklyn and he's hanging out with an older Asian American man named Yori Nakajima. So we later was revealed that he is the father to the kid that he killed in his flashback as Winter Soldier. He his he sees that like a lot of he sees himself in this guy because they're really like similar to the same age, even though Bucky's like 106, so he's older. <laughs> um but and they're both alone, lost a lot of things. So I I can see that they like relate to each other very well. And it's such a sad storyline where like Yori is very um distraught over his son and Bucky is hanging out with him he's going to he goes to lunch with him apparently regularly they go to um this restaurant owned by this girl named Izzy which is kind of like a budding romance between Izzy and Bucky and I'm so excited for it um there's even this fun little m moment when they're eating lunch and uh Yori goes uh Bucky wants to ask you out and <laughs> he sets up a date for them. It's so funny, but Bucky hasn't been able to bring himself to tell him that he's the one that killed his son and it's really hurting him. There's so much inner turmoil and Sebastian Stan is such a good actor. Um, we don't see in this episode, we don't see much action with Bucky. It's all about like character development really. And it's so good. So done well. And that's what I mean by like this episode kind of feels like a slow burn where it's not just like action, 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 but it's, it's developing these characters so well. It's really setting up this world of like what happened after the blip, where we are now. And it's really interesting to see. And so I want to know how um, going forward, how that's going to play out like him and his relationship with Yori. And when he finally admits to him that he's the one that killed his son, it's very, very sad, very tragic, but Bucky ends up going out on a date with this Izzy girl. So funny. And she doesn't know who he is. So winter soldier is not really known, I guess, kind of like Falcon is, um, which I guess makes sense. Cause she asked him, she's like, how old are you? And he literally says 106 and she just kind of laughs it off. And he's like, yeah. And then he's wearing gloves and she asked him about the gloves and he says he has bad circulation. Not that one of his arms is a robot arm. And uh, they play battleship. It's very cute. Um, but he ends up like leaving really abruptly because she mentions his trauma. Like, I mean, he's going through PTSD here clearly. And she met, um, brings up how she thinks it's sweet that he's um, hanging out and spending time with Yori 
and brings up his son and he leaves and it's very sad but i did like the whole dynamic there and i'm so excited for bucky to meet up with falcon and get into the action but yeah there's really not much that hap else that happened with bucky but i do want to mention my favorite standout quote standout line in this episode so good where izzy and bucky are on their date and she's talking and she goes there's She's like, when you lose a spouse, you're called a widow. When you lose your parents, you're called an orphan. She's like, but there's no word for someone whose kids die. There's no word for someone whose kids die. And that was so powerful. And that's kind of what struck Bucky to like start um, freaking out and leave. And it's so true. And it's so cool. And I really love that line. And I'm very excited to see where that romance goes because I'm all about the ships in TV shows. Shipping them, hardcore shipping them. But yeah, so this wraps up the first episode. Um, I don't really know exactly where we're going. We need to, there's a lot of theories here. So first theory or first question anyway, going forward for predictions. How are the Flag Smashers super powered and enhanced? There's a lot of options. How are they super powered? Second question, how is Bucky and Sam going to team up? Can't wait for that. We know what's going to happen, but how are they actually going to meet up? Um, the therapist did say that he was um, ignoring texts and calls from Sam, Bucky was. So maybe he'll eventually give in, especially it's... You know what it is? It's they're gonna team up because um, they're both gonna be distraught over this new Captain America. They're both gonna be upset about it. Um, so that's exciting. And also, are we gonna confirm that Captain America's on the moon? Apparently, uh, Taurus says that there's a lot of rumors going around that uh, Captain America is uh, Steve Rogers is on a secret base on the moon. Um, he even asked Sam, he's like, "Did you fly him to the moon?" And he's like, "Uh, no." Uh, so. Maybe he is. Maybe he's up in space with the scrolls on the moon. Who knows? But I'm so excited. Let me know um, your guys' thoughts in the comments below. All of your fun theories. What's going to happen. How excited you guys are for episode two. I will be back here next week for the next episode for Theater Therapy. This has been a Jay in the Life. Until next time. Bye.